All Things Bike with Fred Thomas is brought to you by Frame and Wheel, eBay selling services for cyclists and bike shops throughout New England, and AD Bikes, the modern face of Austro Daimler Cycling and the bike company of the future. Hi everybody, I'm Fred Thomas and you are watching another episode of All Things Bike, a new program dedicated to the bicycle, the culture of the bicycle, and the people and the organizations that make the community roll here and away. We are speaking with Chris Poulin, race director of Tall Sock Racing today. Chris. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thanks for coming down. It's great to have you have you here. I've been seeing more and more red jerseys around. Tall Sock Racing is in the field. What's yeah. the latest? What's the latest? Tell me about Tall Sock Racing. Well, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're pretty much mid-season as far as uh, the racing season. And uh, we've been out there doing uh, all kinds of events and just uh, trying to get our, our wheels dirty and, and having fun with it. And you're doing a great job. I, I, how yeah. many guys on the team now? Or it's men and women, actually, right? Yeah, we actually have a women's team. And so we added that this year. This is our second year um, total as, as being a team right. uh, or a club that has teams. Um, so two teams, men's, men and women's. Yeah. And, uh, um, and, and, and across masters categories, or or is it um, juniors? Uh, what what's the standard? Yeah, our our team uh, largely started with a lot of people who uh, hadn't raced, so we kind of started to purposely kind of bridge a gap between what we were already doing, um, mm -hmm. you know, riding our bikes, uh, doing some pretty competitive uh, group riding, mm -hmm. and. Um, and then it evolved into a more organized. Um, Structure. It, it did, yeah, and um, so, so yeah, it's it's, it's become. Is it, is it only in Portland, or because I you mean, know, every I see a lot of videos, of you guys, you know, out west and and and, and you know, off the beaten track. Um, yeah. Is it is it a Portland organization, or is it Southern Maine, or how how should people? Think um, of it? It's, yeah, it's primarily, I guess, Southern Maine. I mean, a lot of our mm -hmm. uh, racers are actually all of our racers are in Maine. Mm -hmm. And um, I think probably a lot of what you have seen are just us going out and riding our bikes right, in right. places that we, you know, we're already going to. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, how yeah. um, how about the, um, the the races? I know you guys were at Killington. Um, um, tell us a little bit about that, and 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 maybe some of the events that you you have planned um, for later in the year. Yeah, we've done. Um, let's see, we had a pretty good crew in Killington. Uh, we've done like the Jamestown uh, a couple times. Mm -hmm. Um, Purgatory, which is also coming up uh, this coming weekend, which is a bit brutal. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and we did uh, Ken Herod uh, last weekend. Right, right. And so uh, that, was, that was a good race, also kind of brutal. And is it, is it only road race, or, or are you uh, also looking at, do you go to cyclocross races or triathlons and stuff like that, or is it uh, all road races? As far as the team, we're, we're, we're trying to support kind of the full gamut, you know, if, if you're right. Uh, we're, yes, we're, we're not tying anybody to a specific right. uh, style of riding, and uh, several actually do cycle cross in the fall, mm -hmm. and also um, mountain bike pretty regularly as as, as well right. as I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's um, so it's not just road, and it's not just category two, and um, it can be um, it can be whatever people want to um, participate in. Yeah, and I, I guess I. Maybe you didn't answer your question, but as far as categories, mm -hmm. um, because we started off with a lot of young people um, or a lot of uh, non-racers getting into racing, uh, the categories of just starting to, to matriculate into four. I see. And um, w so we're we're about half and half, fours and uh, fours and fives. All right, great. And yeah. and uh, and how do people join? I mean, uh, you've got a website and all that, but how how have how have people typically? join the club? Is it through word of mouth or...? or um, the first year it was a lot of people that we knew. Right. Um, and it was uh, people that we were comfortable with as far as uh, knowing that they, they, were, they were good riders and, and be able to pack ride and, and right. things like that. And um, also some, some newer people that, that may not have that experience. Right. But... Um, I mean, as you get as out there, as, yeah, people join, right? Yeah, as, as far as joining, um, 
now it's easy to get to us through our website, which is TalsockRacing.com. Yeah. And uh, or just talking to me personally if you see me on a ride, um, yeah. or or uh, like uh, Ken or Ben Ho, uh, yeah. Ken Ryan and um, Todd Strike, they're they're all board members, and also uh, Stephanie McEljoy is is a board member um, as of yesterday actually. All right, is yeah. to to represent the right. The so is it you're you're organized? You're you're uh, a formal. Um, organization and um, we are and that's great and, and the, but is it is it 20 people 50 people I, I, I'm really not sure uh, total people now mm -hmm. uh, four on the women's team and I think 15 now on the men's team right so yeah that's sizable and for for I mean, what does it look like when you go to a race and um, you know, five guys from Tulsoc turn up. Um, are you the largest team there, or, or are there other bigger teams? We, we have been in the past. Mm -hmm. um, when we did Miles Standish, actually, it was a, a bit of a joke in, in, the, <laughs> the, in the gate uh, before, while well, they were staging the race, um, that we were the team that should be doing the most amount of pulling. Oh, yeah. Because we were the, we were, we were the pro, you know, yeah, you had dominant the team. Yeah. yeah. yeah and, I, uh, um, then there have been uh, some races that are uh, a little a little thinner, um, you know, maybe just a couple of us. But mm -hmm. it's really you know schedule oriented and, and things right. like that too. And, and and what are what are the the sort of general objectives of of, of the organization and the team? So I mean, what do you say when someone comes in? And they say, well, you know, I'm thinking about riding with you guys. What what do you say to them? Um, if they have not raced at all yet, um, I suggest to do a couple. Um, mm -hmm. Make sure that you like it, and then, and once you do, yeah. um, come talk to us. Right. And uh, we still want to provide uh, support for people who are who are just getting into it, mm -hmm. um, it's because that's all really how our team started. So we we want to be able to right. make that available as far as uh, supportiveness in right. the and team and environment to new ones. Right. Yeah, and and, um, and sort of give people a sort of a way forward or. or show them that there's a way um, that they can progress. Right. One thing I wonder about is where does the name come from? What's, what's the story behind Tall Sock Racing and the uh, name and how it came around? It was kind of a uh, running joke um, through a few friends and uh, it, it all, as far as uh, it being Tall Sock, um, you know, we're in Maine, we, we yeah. ride in the winter, mm -hmm. uh, fall, and uh, a few times out riding, I, I was harassed a little bit about <laughs> about uh, wearing. I had some; it, they were almost knee-high uh, wool Tall socks. Sock. Yeah, okay. And so I, I got a good uh, braiding about that, and uh, that that kind of just you know that stuck. An ongoing joke. Yeah, well, never judge a cyclist by his clothing or his bike because <laughs> he's the guy who's going to drop you on the hill. Or, or, uh, <laughs> It's and you're a case in quite, point. Quite you're, 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 you're riding very well. And, and, oh, um, thanks. And how long have you been racing? Uh, two years. Two years. This right. is my second year, so not even full two years. Wow, that's great. And, yeah. and you've got a, a, a club and a team, um, and you've got people joining. And, and how, do, how did you, you've got a lot of sponsors, and tell us a little bit about that, and, yeah. and how did you get them in, on board? Um, well, largely uh, through the, the, the efforts of uh, the board. Mm -hmm. Really, uh, so once once we actually figured out that we're gonna we're gonna you know do this, make this make this mm -hmm. uh, a legitimate team, um, we got together and we actually put in a, a lot of a lot of time um, at a local coffee shop, just right. figuring it all out. And we're honestly <laughs> we're still doing it. The first know? board <laughs> meeting, yeah, right. And but um, yeah. so the the the, the sponsors, um, I, I, correct me or or help me remember them. There was Maple. Maple water or oh, drink uh, maple. Drink maple. Yep. Um, I've, I've, I've got yeah. a cheat sheet yeah. so I don't forget anybody. Well, that and, and, and show us the jersey too before before we forget. Yeah. The uh, should you? Because it's all on there, right? <laughs> yeah. Should you uh, dare to race with us? This oh, yeah. is this is the jersey. Uh, it's red. What? It's always blue around here. Now it's red. That's great. <laughs> yeah. We thought we thought we'd mix it up a little bit. Yeah. Right. Uh, so. And all of our sponsors here on the back. There you go. Uh, there's a little okay. some on the front. But um, yeah, as far as all the sponsors, uh, Gorm Bike and Ski sponsored us this year. Right, right. Uh, as the shop sponsor. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Mean Lobster Direct. And wow. River, Riverside Survey. 
and uh, Drink Maple. These are all local companies who who have yeah who saw your organization and, and um, decided to get involved, and that's great. So you you um, you get you get lobsters and 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 maple water and uh, yeah <laughs> yeah we're we're refreshed with maple water um, and we're well fed with lobsters. That's that's good. Yeah. Well, um, any other sort of um, things that you think we should know about about the club or or what's coming up? Um, um, with Tall Sock Racing that, that, um, that's worth mentioning? Well, um, no, I would, I'd, I'd say that uh, if you have questions for us, yeah. then you see if, us, if, come, if, come, come talk to us. Right, and, uh, right. uh, but as far as uh, things to know about us, you've, you've definitely covered a lot of ground. Right, right, so, good. Yeah. Well then, so you've got, you've got uh, a few more races and um, good luck with that. And uh, we'll, we'll see you um, at the races and also out on the rides yeah. and um thanks for coming down thanks for having me it was awesome that was chris poulin of tall sock racing you can learn more about tall sock racing at their website tallsockracing.com and that's all we have for now thanks very much and we'll see you next time hi there everybody i'm fred thomas and you are watching another episode of All Things Bike, a new program dedicated to the bicycle, the culture of the bicycle, and the people and the organizations that make the bicycle community roll here and away. We have a great show for you tonight. We are speaking with Ellen Noble, a professional cyclist, a college student, and a Maine native. Ellen, welcome to All Things Bike. Thank you. It is a great treat. To have you here, you can tell I am nervous because I am in the presence of greatness. <laughs> now, I, I think you have won more cyclocross races than I've actually entered in my entire um, racing career. Can you explain to the viewers what cyclocross is? Because it's, it's not a standard bike racing. Yeah, um, so cyclocross, if you think about it literally, is a cross of two different types of cycling. Mm -hmm. uh, so to kind of delve into that a little bit more, it's kind of a mix of road and mountain biking is how I like to explain it to people. Uh, so if you look at the bike itself, you'll see it's a road frame for the most part. It looks, this is a cyclocross uh, bike Yeah, this bike is a right cyclocross yeah, bike. Right. And so you'll see it has a road style frame, um, but then you have treaded tires, which is traditionally seen on a mountain bike. And the courses have features that are similar to road. Uh, it's kind of a more group race event in some... Uh, mass start. Yeah, mass right, start, right, and right. then you'll see people racing together. But um, it's also, it also has technical features that you'll see during, um, that you would see during a mountain bike race. It's on the right. dirt for the most part. So it's really just a super special type of sport. And what you don't have crossed over that you don't see as much in the other disciplines is the energy of people that are right, racing right, right. it. It's really a special the, type the of bell breed. bell ringing. It's, it's mm -hmm. a spectator sport. It's, it's absolutely. It, it, it's almost, um, and it's a circuit race and everybody's around watching it. But for the American viewer, um, it's a very Euro, it has its origins in Europe. For the American viewer, the, the funniest thing about it is that the, the riders, sometimes they get off their bikes and they pick them up and they start running with them. And um, every time I do that in, you know, in, at the local park and, and around here, you know, the dogs go crazy and the people start calling the police. They think that I'm stealing a bike or doing something. You know. But you know, cyclocross is, um, is different, but is it hard? Is it harder than mountain biking? Or how, can, are they just two totally different things? Or? Yeah, I think... Um that in a lot of ways they're comparable, but I think it's definitely kind of something that some people like, that some people prefer over mountain, mm -hmm. some people uh, don't prefer it as much as mountain, mm -hmm. but I think that they're each hard in their own way. Uh, cyclocross is a really, or is a much shorter discipline of cycling where you'll see races that range from 30 minutes to an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, in a typical mountain bike race, uh, you know, especially at the local level, they're usually two to three hours. Oh, wow, yeah. So, that's a long time on a mountain bike. Right. So rather yeah. a sprint, it's kind of a sprint event or a long distance event that you're comparing the two. I so I think they're both hard, but in yeah. uh, very different, different ways. ways. Wow. Well, how long have you been doing it? Um, I've been doing cyclocross for about five years now, wow. but I've been racing uh, mountain and cycling in general my entire life. Wow. Very good. And But you've had a lot of success with, with, um, 
with um, the cyclocross um, circuit. Uh, you were a national champion, you're a Pan-American um, champion, um, and now you're on a, a new team, Aspire Racing, and that's affiliated with, a, uh, well, explain about Aspire Racing first. Uh, so Aspire Racing is the team that I'll be riding for in for the 2016 and 2017 season. Right. Um, and I think what you're getting at is that it's affiliated with the Jam Fund. Yeah. So the Jam Fund is a nonprofit started by the man that owns Aspire Racing and uh, rides for it, Jeremy Powers, right. the national cyclocross champion for the pro men. He, he's okay at yeah, cyclocross. Yeah, he's, uh, he's pretty know. good at cyclocross <laughs> for sure. Uh, and then my coach, Al Donahue, and a man named Makunda Feldman, uh, they're best friends. Yeah. J-A-M, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what it stands for. Uh, and so it's a nonprofit that they started that uh, takes develop developing cyclists and kind of gives them their start it breaks down the financial barrier and it like really they really produce some great athletes uh, mm -hmm. and I was fortunate enough to become affiliated with them two years ago and now after two years on jam I'll be riding for Jeremy's team Aspire mm -hmm. uh, it's a really exciting opportunity and yeah. what Jeremy hopes is uh, kind of the vision for Aspire is to have a goal kind of something set in the future for other JAM members to kind of have something to aspire to. Right, right. Uh, some structure, uh, uh, a career path. Right? Absolutely. I mean, otherwise, you just keep turning up at the same local race and, mm -hmm. and you keep winning it and then you get tired of it and you, you never move on to the next level. Right. Well, how do you balance a very active and a professional cycling uh, career with, with school? I mean, is it, it must be very um, hard to do. Yeah, it's definitely challenging, but I think the challenge versus the reward, mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely more rewarding than it is challenging. Or I they, they complement each other maybe in some way, right? They yeah. do in some ways. I think um, when I don't have stuff going on, sometimes I have a harder time being focused. And I've been doing it my whole life. I've always been a cyclist and I've always been a student. So going to college was definitely mm -hmm. an added challenge, but mm -hmm. I really enjoy it, and it kind of pushes me to get my homework done right. <laughs> rather yeah, exactly. than procrastinate. Right, there's no, there's, there's you got to be productive. If mm -hmm. you're gonna yeah, very little room get for your error. Training ride in, you got to do your trigonometry, and um, <laughs> what are you majoring in, or what's, or do you, you haven't s sorted out? I have a major. I'm studying public health, okay. and uh, it's really awesome. I think it complements cycling really well without being uh, too similar to it, rather than studying something like kinesiology right, 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 or right. something like that. It's similar enough that I think it complements it without having everything in my life dedicated to cycling. That's great. That's that's um, that's very very smart, and uh, it sounds exciting. So, but back on the topic of, of cycling, so 2016, 2017, and, and the, the key detail about cyclocross is that the season is actually from October through January, right? It's sort of the basketball season, but um, yeah. So, the races are almost always in the rain or the snow. Um, was it, are you racing overseas next year? Is that part of it? No. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, the funniest thing about cyclocross is that mm -hmm. it keeps starting earlier and ending later. So this year we're going to be coming out swing, swinging Labor Day weekend, and we'll be going all the way through to the end of to the beginning of February at this point. So we're going to see the hottest hot and the coldest cold throughout the entire season, uh, and we're going to be seeing some pretty crazy conditions over in Europe. I'm planning. Uh, nothing's set in stone just yet, but we're looking at anywhere from three to five trips over there this season. Uh, we're going to be trying to hit up all the World Cups, wow. but it's really exciting because there will be two World Cups in the U.S. Right. Uh, and oh, then really? the remainder will be in Europe, and I'm really excited. Yeah, you've been, I mean, where the, the World Cup races are in North Carolina this year? or, or where? I, I believe uh, one will be in Las Vegas, oh, which right. is where they had it last year. Mm -hmm. uh, not exactly the traditional World Cup course by any means, but it's still cool to have one in the U.S. And then they're also looking at uh, a World Cup in Iowa where the... Right kind of famous uh, Jingle Cross oh, yeah, was yeah, yeah. last year. So they did such a good job that they earned a World Cup bid. Right. Wow, well, that's great. Well, I mean, is there a difference, do you think, between racing in the U.S. and racing in Europe? I mean, is, what, can you sort of characterize the differences a bit? Um, I think American races are really great, uh, and so are the European races, but they're very different. Mm -hmm. And I think in the U.S., a lot of the races have to be uh, participation-based, whereas in Europe, they're more, it's a spectator sport, so the courses are designed in Europe to be challenging enough that people will enjoy watching it. Whereas mm -hmm. here in the United States, it's more about they'll be easy enough or straightforward enough that anyone can do it so they can increase the numbers. And I so see. it's kind of based off of who they're trying to appeal to. 
Right. Um, and also in the U.S., we don't have it in our blood like they do yeah, yeah, in yeah. Europe. It's a sport that has so much heritage yeah. in Europe that we haven't quite gotten it yet. Yeah, but yeah, I yeah. definitely think it's coming around. I mean, the sport's growing I rapidly. think so. I think that's what that's what I always hear. That cyclocross is the fastest growing segment of of the bicycle uh, industry or, mm -hmm. or, or whatnot. Um, and that's probably probably because you can watch it. Yes. I've got a key question for you. Okay. Uh, when you're when you're sitting there and you're ready to start, you know, rush down. Um, what uh, I guess what kind of music do you listen to to sort of get you set set up for the so-called whole, whole shot, the, the the mad rush for the first corner in one of these races? Right before an event, I have my playlist that I listen to. That's like very, it's like kind of uh, upbeat rap music. Right. I really like listening to hip hop. Uh, it's uh, not speed metal or or it's, some, it's mellow. No, not 120 beats per minute. Sort of yeah, right uh, with your heart. Beat, heart beat. <laughs> yeah, I try to, uh, I don't know how many beats per minute. That's a good way to categorize House. it. But yeah. I like rap music. I okay. like hip hop. I kind of, I'm one of those young people. Run that DMC. <laughs> I'm, am I showing my age here? I, maybe, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's great. It's not really what I'm listening. I'm listening to a lot of. Um, it, whatever it is, it seems to work. Because yeah, I really like it. Because you've been a lot it's, of races with it. With it's loud enough to block out the other people that are around the tent that right, are right, kind right. of distracting me. I'm, I'm a big music person. I think it's, it can be a huge help for Absolutely. people that have a hard time focusing for an event. So. Well, that's um, that's valuable advice. I should do that. I'm I'm uh, I can't listen. To, uh, I have st I listen to music, but usually after the race. Mm -hmm. But Ellen, it has been a great treat speaking to you. And um, thanks for coming in. And good luck um, with the cyclocross season and Thank you. everything in between. Thanks for having me. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching that episode with um, Ellen Noble. If you'd like to know more about uh, her races and uh, Aspire Racing, um, you can look at her website, ellennoble.com, and learn more there. Thanks very much. We'll see you next time.